Okay, so remember that they're changing my voice. So between yesterday and today, and it's about like 2 o'clock or something, um, I've read Revelation chapters 1 through 3. I've read them in um, San Jose, and I read it here in Santa Cruz. This is like my fourth time coming back here within a week. Okay, I rented a car, what have you. And I've been fumed and sabotaged. Okay, I see a lot of gang members on the way here on Highway 1 in Watsonville that stare at me, but I am not moved. I move on my own. I don't have a gun or any significant weapon. You know, I just move in the spirit of God. I'm not here to disrupt. I'm here to kind of hopefully try to reason with anyone who might care to listen. I had an interesting talk the other day with, a, with an older lady, older gentlewoman, and... I asked her one of the questions. I wish I could ask people more questions, but it's not that simple. I found that rather difficult. Um, it's a lot easier to talk when I'm not reading, you know, from my notes and from the scripture. It's a lot easier to tell you what I mean to say. In John, I believe it's John 16, where Christ is the character in the story says, there, there will come a time when I speak to you plainly. And keep in mind that in the story, people call, are called a brood of vipers, evildoers, right? Children of the devil. Okay. You know, John 8, you know, Matthew 23, Mark 7. Christ is a character in the story. He says that they're wrong, that their worship is in vain, that they make people twice the children of hell that they are. This is part of the spirit of God. It's a warrior spirit. We see in uh, Revelation, uh, I believe chapter 2, he's saying that one thing that works in their favor is that they do not tolerate wicked people. So not tolerating the wicked worked in their favor. He said, good job. He's saying to other, you know, all the churches really to repent and to scramble to do what is right and to continue performing the works of God. We see that in the parable of the 10 minas. We see that in the parable of the bags of gold, okay, where it says that people are given according to their ability. The word agility, ability, and ability are connected. The words nobility, and ability are connected. There's a reason why a king wears a sword. Now, if you're more agile than somebody, when you have a sword, okay, it gives you some kind of an advantage to some degree, right? If you're faster, it gives you an advantage. If you're sharper, if you're wiser, it gives you an advantage. And this is part of what, what sparring shows us, transferable skills for actual combat, including single combat. And it was so common that Goliath was surprised and infuriated when David bought a sling instead of uh, a sword or spear. He says, you come at me with sticks. Now, strangely enough, the art of being straightforward and honest through the use of the sticks is something called something to the effect of wazi a tatib. Something to that effect where the idea was if you spar and you really understand the martial art and life principles, that you prove your point through the use of the sticks. Okay, because sparring shows prioritization, it shows timing, it shows wisdom, okay? When it's done right with experts, you know, people who are really determined, really have a higher cause, not people who just merely train techniques and, and learn to kind of respond and hone their reflexes, but people who are moving in a spirit of righteousness. It shows heart, it shows, you know, commitment to wise action, right? It shows various points. That's why it's called point sparring, because they're making a point. So to be straightforward and honest through the use of the stick and to also make points. One point is the reason why he outmaneuvered him is because he was sharper. Now why? If you're leveraging privilege and ill-gotten gains and you're sabotaging the opponent like they're sabotaging me while yet they still can't beat me, then you're making the point that you're just a low-down deceiver. You're seeking to snake the person. This is why Christ was put on a cross, two sticks, Okay, there was a cross, uh, excuse me, a snake elevated in the wilderness. Moses and Aaron threw down their staffs before Pharaoh and turned into a snake. And they ate the snake and, and snakes of the um, wizards who threw down their staffs and did the same thing. These are figurative. They didn't actually throw down their staffs and make them snakes. That symbolizes their attempt to snake each other. And I think that a good interpretation of it is you have non-poisonous snakes and you have poisonous snakes. So it symbolizes the, 
the benevolent uh, um, snake uh, triumphing over the poisonous snake. Now, me personally, I don't like snakes in general. Okay, they're creepy. I don't like them. My, my spirit animals, if you will, are more the falcon, the hare, the lion, and the leopard. And not because, you know, of some kind of erotic desire when it comes to the hare, but the word hair is like the word air for a reason. That agility is impressive. The way it goes side to side and it eludes a lot of the predators is very impressive. And so I have a lot of respect for the, the air and there's a lot of lessons that can be learned. I like the waves crashing on the beach. I have a lot of respect for a lot of animals like the seagulls, okay? I like deer myself, impalas as well. Um, so it's not as simple as leopards hunt impalas and somehow I'm at, at, at odds with them, no. Okay, whatever the righteous man thinks about anything is what I think about it. That's what I've strived to think about. That's where I truly believe. Okay, who I am is someone who is morally precise. Someone who develops to be morally precise. If a bird had his wings clipped by an oppressor while it was growing up, okay, do you blame the bird or the oppressor? That's the difference between me and other people is I'm the essence of moral precision because I was born to be the top martial artist ever. So I'm born blameless. There's nothing that I can do that could be something you could blame me for because my overwhelmingly, uh, my overwhelmingly natural state is to be moral, morally precise. And there's a bunch of deceivers trying to confuse this. Even right now, there's a little bit of fumes in the air, what have you. And since there's a lot of wind at Westcliff, you know, it, it kind of dissipates a little bit. So I'm trying to, you know, benefit from the... Uh, the wind, you know, the breeze, which takes away some of the chemicals in the air, which they're using to try to confound my speech. So when the righteous person is determined to do what is right, who would stop him? You know, why is the state trying to stop me? And I'm not here to just spend all the all my time, you know, arguing with the state and their their workers or something. You know, all nations are wrong. I can't think of any nation in history that has proven definitively that it was right except for the Igbo nation a long time ago and that's that's been over with for quite some time. Now everybody has accepted the broad path to destruction and it doesn't allow for wise thought, for righteousness and justice, for a truly noble path, a path where he says no to Baal, saying no to wickedness, rejecting sin for moral precision and having the heart to proceed. Heart, he art, martial art. Martial is marital scrambled and Christ is the bridegroom. And why won't they tell the truth about this? Because they reject the true warrior path of God for mere conformity, for mere indecency. So as I proceed to face adversity, very proud that God has set me apart very proud of, of God Almighty, very proud of my allegiance to God Almighty, boasting in my loyalty, boasting that I know God, that I know God and He has perfected me through adversity, through technology in 2024. Now, God is not going to be with people after my flesh dies because there's no moral path. If you're here just to serve yourself, why should God assist you? He doesn't work that way. Okay, the government tries to tell me how things work and how they don't work, but they're not the ones who determine how things work. God is the one who determines how things work. God is, is, is greater than I am. I am God's son. I'm the right hand of God. I perform for God and not performing in terms of mere acting, but I actually do the actions of God the works of God. I'm, I'm morally convicted. I have the moral fortitude, the moral will, the moral clarity to insist that people do the works of God and to put my life on the line every moment of every day. Okay, there's been times when they've caused me extreme cognitive damage. There's been times when I've been on the ground holding my stomach, but I tell you, no, no matter how much pain you've been through, I've been in a car accident going 100 miles an hour where someone else was driving. Okay, eventually what happened was, well, it was initially going 100 miles an hour, then it turned the other way on the freeway and it slowed it down and it did a bunch of flips in the air and on the ground. And maybe the government did that with technology. That's my theory. I'm pretty sure they did. But, you know, I felt a lot of pain. It caused me a lot of back pain that I still have to this day. Okay? And no pain is so bad that you should forfeit your soul for. I mean, that's, that's crazy. Do not fear feeling pain. Okay, you get used to pain. It's like working out in the gym. You get used to it. 
If women can give birth to children, why won't people stand firm for God? Because that's what is the right thing to do. As you can see that, you know, there's females that drive by, they walk by and they, they seem very attractive, right? All of them would probably reject me because my belief system is moral precision because the government has put chemicals on my lips to make them look red. And even though it's very common for people to wear lipstick, you know, who are our guys, I don't, I don't appreciate the way they've changed the way I've looked. They changed my shape and my face with years of fumes and poisons. Try to make it so I resemble the elite. I don't want to resemble the elite. The sun is the image of God. And for those who can't see the spirit of God in me very well, one of the few chances they have is to see me in my natural flesh-based form. So how much was it of an injustice was it when the churches refused to rally to me and put a lamp on its stand so that other people can see the proof of God? The miracle, my God cell, my Ra cell. Ra in Hebrew means evil, but Ra in Egyptian mythology means God. And before Abraham, I am. Abraham does not predate the 30, uh, 30, 3200 BC when Egypt was founded by Narmer, a.k.a. Mene, a.k.a. Main A, Main Alpha, the Falcon King, who Nimrod either refers to or was a mere reflection of, depending on how you interpret. Again, the Bible is just a book of, uh, of stories based on some realities where the characters tend to be changed. Okay, so you know them by their works, not the scribes' claims over who is who in the story. As, as Napoleon famously said, he said, history is quote-unquote written by the winners. Do I respect that? No. People should tell the truth about things. Okay? They should not be sexually immoral. They should not choose to go with the flow of the world. They should choose to stand firm in the Spirit of God. Like, probably two and a half months because I... There is no other logical way to live one's life. So one is illogical when they do not follow God. If you reject the possibility of a belief in God, if you reject the possibility that the first thing had to be something that was so powerful that it did not need to be created, and that's why we're here, then you are not living in reality. That's worse than rejecting the possibility that water is wet, okay? You could get away with a lot not believing water is wet, but if you do not believe that God is real, and you do not even believe in the possibility, then you are basically insane. You basically, out of selfishness, out of political motive, uh, economic motive, social motive, you've convinced yourself to do the wrong thing. You've convinced yourself to block out the possibility that morality is greater than everything else. And the logical assumption, the overwhelmingly logical assumption is that morality is greater than everything else. Okay, in my experience in martial arts, in my experience with the world, at 43 years old, I can tell you with certainty that people who are more moral than other people are greater than they are because they, they're adorned with their righteousness. They're adorned with their justice. They're adorned with their morality. And people who reject the, the idea that righteousness is greater than wealth are basically insane. How could that not be the case? Okay, and so when we look at society, why won't they rally to me? Why am I shunned? Why does the word shun uh, rhyme with the word sun? And it's very similar to the word sun and the H is the ancient symbol for the fence. Okay, why are there so many proofs out there? The word prepare is pre-rape scrambled. The word compare is mock rape scrambled. Why were there the black faces? Why were the clan mocking people? Why were so many groups, so many fraternities hazing, right? Mystery, mist, Babylon mystery and hazing. Why was this occurring? because people are in some kind of crazed state as they reject the irrefutable fact that righteousness is greater than wealth, that righteousness is greater than everything else. They reject even the possibility that a short righteous life is greater than a long wicked life. And where does that take them? It takes them to a realm of fear where they fear doing what is right. And again, Ra in Hebrew means evil and the word fear is a play on words for fi Ra. So they want you to accept being evil. In fact, the word free is a play on words for fi are. Who, when people identify as something, okay, they want them to give up their natural identity and to take on a, a, a despicable state-sponsored identity. They talk about destroying your ego. 
where your ego is your sense of self, okay? It's one thing to have an inflated ego. Again, it's one thing to have an inflated ego. It's another thing to have a sense of self. That's who you are. When God said to Moses, he said, go tell the Jews, I am who I am. I am that I am. I am what I will be are other interpretations. So I am who I always was. Before Abraham, I am. Before this planet existed, I am. God had an idea for me and a plan for my life before the earth, all those billions of years ago, even existed. I am the one God set apart as the top martial artist ever possible on a planet that has been here for four billion years, which will no longer have a logical, righteous path after my flesh dies due to tech, cheating, breeding, and ever, uh, generational ill-gotten gains. Even the word tech, T-E-C-H, is the word cheat. Okay, scramble without the A, without the alpha. That's not a coincidence. The scribes took a lot of time and effort when they came up with the spilling of the language. It's their craft, occult spilling. So when we see these words that reflect the underhanded and diabolical schemes of the, of, the, of the governing class and the social clubs and the secret societies, it's not a coincidence. It couldn't possibly be because the patterns verify it. The overwhelming amount of empirical evidence verifies the, the plan of, of the governing class, of the global governing class. So as we see that the plan that has been set before the world is wicked, one must really consider their course. They must consider, and they must examine, and they must contemplate, right? Con, template, contemplate the con, template. Look at the bigger picture. And the word picture has the word pick in it. And the word scripture is like the word picture, because you gotta get the picture, and you can't be fooled by the imposter. Okay, the phrase, uh, uh, I'm imposter, is there in the word quote unquote imposter because they have you on an imposter path now there's a difference between the light of reality and the light of illusion the word illusion starts with ill because if you don't live in reality you become more and more ill and it's proven with science right moral intensity increases mental clarity so when they reject morality they reject mental clarity they reject having a sound state of mind and people used to practice martial arts with sound because it is part of the tune of nature. And when you kind of come into tune with the correct tune and not the devil's tune, the correct vibration, no occult nonsense, just the facts, then you truly see things for what they are. If you don't have a certain mental vision that's based in reality, then you won't be able to effectively consent to things. That's why it's called a consent, because of the con. And the confidence man who builds confidence, he's a con man. He makes you confident in going down the wrong path. Where I teach you to use your head. And I put my videos out there for all to see. I have like 16,000 videos in the last 15 years. Because I am not trying to trick anybody. I don't like tricks. I look for true love. A woman who falls victim to the system, who's trapped and snared by the system, becomes a trick. And the guy who tricks off his money to get the trick is a trick. Now, excuse my language here for a moment, but the wordplay is key here. Why would you want to re impregnate a female who has been tricked by child molesters and their allies? Why would you want to spend your time with her? The best years of your life, maybe 19 through 29. Before that, you're kind of young. After that, you start getting old and women start lying about their age and whoever else and what have you. So you've got to tell the truth. You've got to live the truth. You got to insist on what is right with all your heart. That is the greatest commandment. Now again, you know the reason why I've I've gone on for like, you know, 20 minutes in this video and I made one uh, video before this right here because I'm not really bothering anybody. And there's people who are riding their bicycles and playing music and so on and so forth. People with loud cars, so I figure that it is fair. So I make that kind of judgment call. And so I know I'm not disorderly. I'm in the divine order. And on top of that, I'm not causing disorder in the movement of people. But it is my divine imperative to why I'm here, knowing that I will have no children in the long term in this world. I won't be, quote unquote, challenging the power of the governing class because I won't have any children. OK, but it is my divine duty to point out that they are leading the world astray. The beasts in Revelation 
okay? Their heads stand for the kings. Their swords, uh, excuse me, their, their horns stand for the kings, okay? The beasts themselves are said to be kings. The dragon, same thing. There are some kings of certain crafts that are more evil than others, just as the dragon is more evil than the beast. No servant can be greater. So therefore, the dragon is a more evil conglomerate of kings than the beast is. So as we search with all of our hearts for the deep truths, the profound, pro proof, pro of, the Lord is a warrior, the Lord is his name. Okay, the heart of a warrior, the heart of hearts, a lion heart. A lion is not a sheep. The spirit of God is a spirit of power, not complacency, not complicity, excuse me, not complicity, not going with the crowd. It's carrying your cross to attain the crown of victory. You see, they put the word crow in the word crown, but the reality of the situation is a true crown is a falcon crown, is a lion crown, a leopard crown, and not the leopard in Revelation, but the leopard teaching the lessons of martial art principles, which are the life principles refined. There were no scientists with fancy labs that made it so that humans evolved into human beings. Humans evolved because of the martial arts spirit of God through the African martial art line. What is more miraculous than that? Before Abraham was Ham, and I'm not racist, my kingdom is not of this world, not a racist bone in my body. I judge people by the content of their character. I judge them by their heart. As the Bible says, the Lord weighs the heart. The Lord weighs the motives. The Lord weighs the actions, the deeds. People are judged by their hearts, by their motives, by their deeds. And the sum total of their life reflects that as water reflects the face, life reflects the heart. One's life reflects the heart. And the way, the truth, and the life is a righteous and just life. Why be alive if you're not going to be righteous and just? Because if you're not going to be righteous and just, you're the walking dead. Walk with God like the Skywalker and don't walk with the dead like the devil and, and Malbosia and Asmodeus and all these lowly worms that people worship these days. Dagon and Chemosh, utter dogs I have trampled and conquered with my top martial arts challenge. In fact, I call to the followers of Baal, okay, if you have a viable counter argument for the fact that I am God's son and you are merely false idol following idolaters, present it. Or I will consider that you have, I will consider it, I will come to the conclusion that you have conceded my point. Because Baal's Greek counterpart is Zeus, and he is the center of Western culture. And even right now, the government is watching me, and his followers are watching me. When you have no viable counterargument, you have conceded. If David did not accept Goliath's challenge, he would have conceded. But in our story of life, while there still is life in the human race before they are turned into chaos and desolation, before they are dust made sulfur, a burning lake of sulfur, before their very souls are set on fire with no way back, with no water to quench it, before their peace and well-being is permanently lost as they are hooked to the machine of the government instead of focusing on reality and moral precision, which is the true compass and guide for reality. Without moral precision, there is no reality. There's just being hooked to a machine and technology and being a scatterbrained fool, an unfocused fool, a senseless, reckless, ditzy, okay, an inconsiderate and shallow and selfish and self-centered fool. It is not cool to be a fool. So as I proceed with my heart intact, with my motives intact, with the armor of God, the helm of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, with a sash of gold around my heart, around my chest, faithfulness, righteousness, with the buckler of truth, the shield of faith, the sword of scripture, and the potent, sharp, double-edged sword of the martial arts spirit of God. I am not moved in the slightest. Who can say it's corny? Can these things being said by the top martial artists be corny? No. They are true. They are potent. They are intense can focus moral intensity in its pure form no propaganda no theater arts ever be corny no so at the end of the day we we see that the world has conceded my point by its refusal to present a viable counter argument so without a viable counter argument 
I am able. I am vi able. My argument sticks out. It's set apart as I am. I'm in the true spirit of God. Thank God Almighty. I did not create it myself. God made me. My parents and my flesh-based ancestors, if you will, aren't responsible for bringing me forth. They couldn't do that. God Almighty has gave me life. And unlike the masses, I respect God enough to obey God with all my heart. The word obey is a play on words for obi. King, heart, hut, essence, center, temple, core is what obi means. Kuro obi means black belt in Chinese and Japanese and the Asian martial arts. Okay, remember that they're changing my voice. So I made a minor mistake at the end. I'll probably just cut it off. Um, even in jiu-jitsu, which is a Brazilian martial art of grappling that comes from Japan and ultimately uh, was inspired by the African martial arts of old, like Nuba wrestling, what have you, which also predates Greco-Roman wrestling. Okay, they wear a black belt. And, and again, the belt symbolizes allegiance to the king. They just aren't aligned to the king. They just are in rebellion against me. Because what is a martial artist, right? Even in Western culture, Mars was their god of war in, in uh, you know, there's Mars and Aries in Greco-Roman culture, okay? But what is true warfare? When true warfare goes beyond the deity you worship, okay, that is the essence of martial arts, not mere white supremacy in the Greco-Roman frat system and what have you, you know, pagan mythology, what have you. So the belt is actually symbolizing allegiance to me, except for they are disloyal. And, and there's more than one reason that their belt is therefore black. Because their hearts are black as they are in rebellion. Because they've accepted the way of darkness and, and utter night and disorder and chaos. As, as the Bible says, figuratively speaking, again, figuratively speaking, they've accepted death, Mormon, uh, excuse me, death, mourning, famine, and widowhood. Okay, so it's making me kind of making it harder for me to speak here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up here. I, I spoke for quite some time. I'm hoping to stop in Watsonville and do one more speech on the way back, but I probably won't because they're expecting me. Um, so just like Christ is a character in the story, I have to kind of choose which towns and cities I go to. Okay, and I kind of have to drive around and mix it up. It's rather unfortunate. But if society had scrambled to support me, you know, to give me my rights, to expose the government campaign, to force them to compensate me for persecuting me, and I don't care about money, I'm happy to die on the trajectory I'm on from fumes and poisons, but if they had done these things, I would have the congregation. Okay, people would understand this argument. This argument should be front and center for the world to see. Not some super church nonsense, not some organized by the government and the governing class so people worship them and fall in line with their social ordered kind of garbage, but the truth. Okay? I have no problem never being rich in life. If I'm ever compensated, I will not live a luxurious life. There's too many people who are homeless and you can mark my words and you can repeat them to me anytime you want. It is extremely ignoble and dishonorable to live a life of luxury while 9 million people starve to death every year in the world. And to argue that they'll persecute you if your family, if you don't, is rather unfortunate as well. See, people should commit to what, what is right. They should not commit to kind of self-indulgence. You know, pagans are known for their self-indulgence. And the word pagan is a play on words for pagan because they were very much about what the modern churches are about, which is exploiting people, taking advantage of them, mistreating them. Okay? Now, you see that when the churches did what they did, it forced me to speak on it. It says, beware of wolves in sheep's clothes. Expose the works of, uh, you know, have nothing to do with the works of evil. Expose it, right? God separated the light from the darkness. Okay, put a lamp on his stand, which means to elevate the philosophies, the philosophy that is greater than all others by putting it on its stand for all to see, for all to have a chance to understand. And so as people live their lives with their organized harassment, with their fuming me, right? Part of what's going on is they walk by and there's fumes on their body or something. I don't know if they know or not. And it kind of comes off and fumes me. But there's a little breeze here, what have you. They have some way of fuming me in the car. People drive by the road, they park on the side of the road and they, with their windows down and it fumes me and it throws me off a bit. But I tell you, I tell you, I tell you, take these words to heart, write them on the tablet of your heart. It is much better to be persecuted for righteousness sake and to stumble on half your words or more 
than to not be persecuted and give some kind of theater art presentation, which by default is for sissies, because when you carry your cross, you will be persecuted. And if you're not persecuted, you're failing in life. The word fall is like the word fail for a reason. They failed to carry their cross and I have triumphed in the true spirit of God.